A friend of mine who runs a local liquidation and secondhand furniture shop just dropped this piece off and asked if I could get it back into sellable condition. I've got free reign as long as it's pretty and it works at the end. So let's see what I can come up with. Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvage by K. Scott. The style of this little dresser with its boxy frame, dainty turned legs, and mix of veneers, solid woods, and plywood tells me that it's a classic depression era piece from the late 1920s or early 1930s. And boy, has it seen some things in its time. Structurally, it's in perfectly sound condition, but there's a ton of missing veneer and what's still attached is barely hanging on. A lot of the finish is worn away on the top and the legs as well. And I think it's just time for a new look. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with this thing design wise, but I figured that I'd just get started breaking things down and assessing the situation as I considered my options. This mirror has some beautiful age and patina to it and was held into its harp with these two threaded bolts. So I carefully unscrewed those and set it aside in a safe place and then just followed the screws along the back to remove the harp as well. I pulled out each drawer and removed the original wooden knobs. One of them is broken and I could repair it with some wood putty, but I think I'm probably going to want to replace these with something metal, but still period appropriate instead. Just like my shirt says, I am probs going to paint this thing. It definitely could be patched up, have the old finish stripped and be restained. But since the drawer fronts are a walnut veneer, the legs are maple, the front skirt piece is oak and the side panels are plywood, I'd end up needing to stain it in such a super dark finish like it was originally to camouflage all those differences that I may as well just go with paint anyway. So much of the veneer on the drawers and the top was loose. I did consider gluing what I could back down and filling in the missing chunks, but after finding a few spots on the top drawers that had already been reattached, I decided that since I was going to be painting anyways, I'd just bite the bullet and remove it all. I started at the veneer with my painter's tool and got off as much as I could. And then I plugged in the junky old iron that I keep in the garage for this exact purpose and grabbed some rags and clean water to start steaming off the sections that were still stuck down. The hide glue that was used to apply the veneer originally is water soluble. So a bit of steam helps reactivate it and makes getting underneath with a blade so much easier.
Once I had all the veneer off and the wood had had a chance to dry back out a bit, I grabbed my sander and some 180 grit sandpaper to start removing any remaining glue and smoothing out the really rough construction grade wood that was underneath. I also made sure to go around the edges of each drawer with my sander to remove a tiny bit of material from each surface and make room for my new layers of primer and paint so they didn't build up too much and rub on each other. A millimeter or two here can really make a huge difference in chipped edges. Once I had those surfaces smoothed out, I just continued on sanding to remove whatever failing finish was left and scuff up the sides of the dresser where the finish was still intact so that my paint would have a little bit of texture to grab onto. a caster while I was sanding so I popped the rest of them off too. They are rusty, stiff, and very squeaky so I'll give them a little bit of love before I put them back on but to get around the curvy legs on here I put a squishy foam interface pad on my sander that helps get around all those details without grinding anything flat. I got all the sanding on the dresser done, so I wiped everything down with a clean microfiber cloth to grab all the extra dust off the surface, but I still needed to sand the mirror frame and the harp. Fun furniture fact, on a lot of newer antiques, I know that's an oxymoron, and vintage furniture, you can actually find a manufacturing date stamped on the back of the glass. I used a flathead screwdriver and some needle nose pliers to remove the staples from this cardboard backer as carefully as I could. Okay, if I'm lucky, there will be a date somewhere on the back of this glass. 1931, look at that. Now I have to get all these blocks out of here so I can get the glass out. Um, do I? I wonder if... And just hand sand the frame. I think so. And then I can mask off the glass and not have to muck around with it because I would hate to hate to have something bad happen to that glass. Okay. I stuck some masking tape on the glass, stapled the backer board back on, and then just used a sanding block to gently scuff up the frame by hand. On to primer. If you've been around here for any length of time, you know that I almost always prime and I almost always use this shellac based primer to do it. This stuff does all the things. It sticks to almost any surface. It seals in stains and odors. And most importantly on this piece, it's going to create a nice unified surface for my paint to sit on so that you can't see or tell that there are a bunch of different textures going on underneath. Since it sticks so well to everything, I don't love putting it through my spray gun and I prefer to roll it on instead. I rolled on a coat over the whole exterior. Well, I rolled the flat stuff and then used a chip brush to get around the curvy spots and the mirror frame. Another nice thing about this stuff is that it highlights any flaws that are hard to see when you're looking at a regular furniture surface. So I did find a few little scratches and dents that needed some filler. Once I had that first coat on, I just wrapped my roller and tray in a plastic bag so it didn't dry out and then went back and filled in the little boo-boos that I'd found with some lightweight wood filler.
that dried pretty quick so i sanded those spots smooth with some 400 grit sandpaper cleaned up the dust and then rolled my second coat of primer over top to seal all that in After about 30 minutes, the primer was dry enough for me to go over everything one more time with some more fine 400 grit to smooth out any roller texture or little crusty bits that had dried in it. Again, more dust cleanup. And then I started masking off the drawers for paint. But I decided to try something new this time and try spraying the paint on this thing with the drawers inside the dresser. I know a lot of other furniture painters who do this all the time, but I've always preferred to remove the drawers, wrap them up in paper or plastic and paint each piece separately. It's just the way I've always done things. So I figured why not change it up and see what happens. So I popped all the drawers back into their spots and then laid out my drop cloth and propped the dresser up on some old paint cans before I got my pneumatic spray gun out and strained some of this fusion mineral paint in their color coal black into it. I added about half of the pint and then about two tablespoons of water, which I've been finding really helps level it out a bit when I'm spraying this paint. I made sure that my air pressure was set to 40 PSI hooked up the gun to the compressor and tested out all of my settings on a scrap piece of wood. When I was happy with how the paint was coming out of the gun, I moved over to the dresser and got it on there. I try to keep my gun at a consistent distance away from the surface for each pass and overlap each stroke by about 50% to get consistent coverage and lay down enough paint that it's wet enough to settle down and lay flat, but not too much that it starts to drip or sag before it dries. This can definitely take a little bit of practice to get right, and I still mess it up sometimes. So don't be too hard on yourself if you tried spraying and it didn't go well. Practicing this is the only way to learn it. To paint all the way around the spindles on the harp, I popped an old coat hanger that's all stretched out over our garage door track and then hung the harp on it through one of the screw holes. This way I could paint at any angle and not have to worry about it touching anything while it dried. This is what my first coat looked like when it was dry, about two hours after I'd sprayed it. I gave it another really light wipe down with my 400 grit and then a microfiber cloth to keep it smooth and sprayed on my second coat, which is typically all I need to do. Once that second coat was dry, I was happy with how it was looking. So I grabbed a couple of small screwdrivers to help me open those drawers so that I could brush some paint around the edges that I couldn't get with the sprayer. I'm not sure that I'll be adopting this method of drawers in spraying because I don't like this step. It does save the masking materials and keep the overspray out of the inside of the piece though. So I guess it's not all bad. Fusion is a super durable paint that has a built-in top coat, so I could have gotten away with leaving things there, but I wanted to add a bit more sheen to it. And hey, a little bit of extra protection never hurt anything either. So I stirred up a can of satin water-based polyurethane and then poured a bit into a separate container and mixed in a tiny bit of my paint. It's pretty hard to get a nice consistent finish with a poly over top of dark colors like this. It almost always looks cloudy or streaky when it dries. So tinting it like this can really help avoid that. Don't do that. I poured my mixture into my cleaned out gun, tested the spray again, especially since this is a thinner consistency than the paint was, and started spraying it the same way, overlapping each pass and making sure that there was enough product on the surface to dry evenly, but not too much that it drips. And the milky blue look is totally normal. It actually helps you see where you've been and how much product you're putting down, but it will dry to a nice, hard, clear finish.
one more sand. Are we seeing a pattern here? And then wiped up the dust again and sprayed on my second and final coat of this. Always follow the instructions on the can for whatever product you're using as far as dry times, recoat times, and curing times. The manufacturer of the product will always tell you what you need to know to get the best results. On to finishing touches, I sprayed the casters down with some WD-40 and scrubbed off as much of the surface rust as I could with a wire brush. And then the next morning, once the top coat was fully dry, I laid the dresser on its back so that I could pop those casters back in and touch up the bottom edges that the sprayer didn't catch. Also rubbed a bit of beeswax furniture salve on the tracks inside the dresser and on the bottom edges of the drawers to lubricate them and keep them sliding nicely and conditioned all the old wood on the insides of the drawers with that as well. I was able to find these new knobs on Amazon and they match the little flower detail on the top of the mirror perfectly. They're definitely period appropriate for this piece too. And I think they add the perfect little touch of brass. Okay, it's time for before and afters. Here is the dresser that was dropped off to me for some love. Missing veneer, peeling veneer, failing finish, and just in sad condition. And here is the fixed up, new finished version that I created. I initially thought about painting this piece pink for a little girl's room, but then I thought this black was a bit more timeless and would make this piece more versatile in a modern home. I picture it sitting in someone's entryway as a place to fix their hair on the way out the door and then catch their keys on the way back in at the end of the day. I don't know. That's the little story I've created for myself. Let me know down in the comments what color you would have painted this piece. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today as I worked through this project. I'm off to the thrift store now to find the next one. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you all next time.